President. I rise to speak in support of Statutes Amendment COVID-19 Permanent Measures Bill 2021. Indeed, uh, I would have thought just over a year ago, when we first uh, started grappling with this pandemic, that we would not have had such emergency management uh, measures in place for well over a year, as we have seen. But this pandemic, of course, has turned our worlds upside down and uh, provided uh, for, I think, a prism to re-examine the way we live. Uh, the bill has some very practical measures that will continue to be ongoing and become permanent uh, measures as much as we have permanency in these pandemic times. Indeed, the Aboriginal Lands Parliamentary Standing Committee Act is amended to ensure that uh, members may join by audio-visual audio means. And, uh, I note that the uh, chair, uh, the presiding member of that committee, reflected on the, uh, the ease at which this has assisted uh, members of that committee to participate in the work of the committee, but indeed the uh, technology perhaps being a little lacking at time and concur with that. And I would point out while we were given information in the briefing that that was to support regional members. Uh, for those of us who, for example, have um, had other requirements and are not regional, whether it's waiting for a COVID test or not being able to be physically in this building, uh, the changes that have been brought about by the pandemic uh, with the ability to meet remotely through audio vigil uh, measures have meant that democracy has continued uh, under the pandemic in a way that I think uh, has given it a real shake up. And certainly this building and the institution in which we sit sometimes does need such a shake up, Madam Acting President. Uh, the Acts Interpretation Act, the Emergency Management Act, the uh, Environmental Protection Act, the Mental Health Act, uh, and many more are all subject to some of these permanent, very practical measures that have become part of our world of living differently under COVID. And we've lived now under this pandemic for a little over a year, and uh, certainly it's been a very challenging time, and uh, certainly South Australia has risen to the challenge. And I echo uh, the commendation that other members of this council have uh, acknowledged today for Professor Nicholas Spurrier, our Chief Public Health Officer, and for Commissioner Grant Stevens, our state coordinator. They have faced quite testing times, and I think we have been in very safe hands uh, with those two at the helm. I note that we are technically in a police state, however, and the Greens certainly don't find comfort in being in a police state, uh, and I'd certainly rather we were in a public health state. And I note that other jurisdictions around the country don't necessarily have the police commissioner as their state coordinator or equivalent position. And indeed, the uh, very uh, specific nature of whatever emergency they face then determines who is the lead agency and person in charge. So certainly from the Greens, in terms of debating the Emergency Management Act uh, well over a decade ago now, um, perhaps uh, if we could go back, turn the clock back, uh, perhaps should it have been a public health emergency, it should have been the public health Chief Public Health Officer in charge ongoing. And uh, for example, if it was a fire emergency, the head of the fire services uh, in charge ongoing, etc. But this pandemic has challenged us all. We've been told to stay at home, to stay safe. What well, that has absolutely made crystal clear is that not everyone is safe at home and not everyone has a home. Uh, for those who live with family and domestic violence, their homes were not safe, and yet we were forcing them to stay there with very little supports and with increased isolation and often with increased coercion. I've been quite critical of the lack of proactive response. And certainly uh, over the period of time that we've had some of the emergency declarations, there has been a lacking understanding of the complexity of domestic and family uh, violence, but I am pleased to say that that is improving as uh, the voices have been heard of those who uh, represent particularly the women's sector and the DV and family violence sectors in those emergency declarations. But of course, under the pandemic, just over a year ago, we saw the Premier declare that no one need be homeless in this city. And indeed, we cleared the streets of those who were homeless and living rough 
in what was just before this time last year, the coming of winter as well as the onslaught of the pandemic, and we housed people in hotels or homes. We found them a roof to put over their heads and found them the supports that they needed. We showed that it can be done and we showed that the world can change overnight if we simply reprioritise what we think is important. And in that case, we thought it was important to have good public health for the entire community, and so we supported the most vulnerable in our community. At a Commonwealth level, we saw people on welfare payments lifted out of poverty, abject poverty, Madam Acting President, for the first time in many generations. And that has now been lost. And as uh, should we, like Victoria, face a lockdown situation again, I do fear uh, what will happen with now that lack of support for housing, that lack of a welfare system that has put people above the poverty la line rather than plunge them into poverty? And should we need to again be telling people stay at home to stay safe, uh, whether or not they will be safe, whether or not they will be secure, and whether or not they will even have a home, Madam, Madam Acting President? This pandemic is an opportunity to build back better. The Greens have said that in our campaigning work across the country, um, but we have shown that political choices are made as to whether people have homes, as to whether people live in poverty, as to whether people have good access to public health. And it has laid bare one of the tenets of the public health uh, mantra, if you like, that there are social determinants to health. And in this case, those social determinants have very much um, exposed what I would call cracks in our social fabric. Building back better shouldn't mean that we paper over the cracks. We actually have to rebuild and ensure that those cracks that have now been exposed are properly fixed, that people are housed, that people are able to live good and healthy lives, able to afford food, rent, power, utilities and medicine should they need it, education should they need it. And I've got to say that unfortunately I think we're heading back into our own, our, um, the era of our old ways. While these measures in this bill today are good practical measures, there is no vision coming from the Marshall government about ensuring people aren't plunged into poverty aren't put into homelessness yet again. We're seeing rough sleepers on our streets increase at a rapid rate, in fact, at a rate higher than I have seen in uh, my adult lifetime in, of living in this city, and I find that to our shame. I note that NRAS expires soon, and I think that there's another cliff of uh, increased rents that are about to hit that somewhat private rental market that was supported by the Rudd era uh, reforms that in increased the ability of uh, people to be uh, paying an affordable rent under that scheme. Now that is something that we haven't seen a redress for coming from the state government and I think that is again to our shame as a parliament. The real pandemic I think Mr President is coming. That is we face the public health crisis of the coronavirus. We've seen our worlds turned upside down. We've seen um, you know, shortages of toilet paper in the supermarket, uh, a, a twist on who really is an essential worker in this day and age. The uh, fascination of things like TikTok and watching Tiger King all have their place in the stories that we tell of our woes of the pandemic. And I've got to say, Mr President, I will here declare I did not bake a single loaf of sourdough in the pandemic. I did eat quite a few. <laughs> and the Honourable Rob Sims interjects that neither did he. And uh, I've tasted his cooking and I uh, think that that's a very fine thing. Um, but what, what we have seen, though, is through this shared trauma, um, the importance of community, the importance of connection, the reason people have resorted to those things, which uh, I, I put in a somewhat, you know, humorous and trite way is because as a community um, we are stronger together but we have been forced quite often into isolation and the most vulnerable of us have suffered the most. The pandemic I look on as an earthquake that has shaken 
the very foundations of our social fabric. But what is the tsunami to come? And the Honourable Terry Stevens raised this. What is the tsunami to come post the pandemic earthquake? Is of course a mental health crisis. And I'm often fond of saying that it's not whether your glass was half empty, it's not whether your glass is half full that affects your mental health, it's how long you have been made to hold that glass. And no one can hold a half full or a half empty glass forever. The longer we make people struggle to pay the rent, to afford medicines, to be able to feed themselves, and the harder we make their lives, the more trauma we expose them to, the less likely they are to be able to meet the challenges to come as we transition from this public health pandemic. And the mental health crisis to come is what needs our most urgent attention and all of our efforts. The pandemic, as I say, um, is, however, an opportunity to build back better, build more houses, build public, public infrastructure, ensure that we have food and water security in this state to get the basics right of a good social system, a healthy welfare state that will create a healthy population, both physically and mentally. I, for one, look forward to a recognition, uh, as we have seen at various levels of government, of the importance of our public institutions, of the importance of public investment and the importance of ensuring that all share in what is in Australia, in this developed nation, a very wealthy nation. And uh, with those few words, Mr President, I commend the bill and look forward to the second reading committee debate. Calling on Mr Sims.